Alright, what we're going to do now is go through the steps of configuring and installing Tor on your Linux box. First thing we're going to do is just make a new directory. We're going to call it slash user slash src slash Tor. We're going to change to that directory. And now we're just going to download the three package we need to, packages we need to get this started. I'm going to do this from the command line. Feel free to pause the video to give yourself time to copy these addresses into your web browser first one here this is called libevent and this is the second one this is uh, Tor itself now uh, these uh, releases that I have here are the most current at the time of making this video it may be worthwhile to check at the uh, main website for each of these three packages to just double check that these that um, there aren't any newer re stable releases available okay this one is provoxy if you want to look for um, new releases, you can simply go to Google and type the name of these three packages in, and the um, the main websites are the first result. Three packages are libevent, tor, and provoxy. All right, so now what we're going to do is write a, a quick and dirty shell script to just untar all three of these at once. There we go. Okay, so now we have the three package. We're gonna packages. We're gonna build libevent first. This is very simple. Simply run uh, configure and then make. And then you're gonna switch to your root account. Then run make install. And that's all there is for libevent. It's quite simple. Uh, next, we're going to build the Tor package and uh, this is the exact same uh, process you want to start as an unprivileged user and you're going to run dash slash configure followed by make followed by su to root followed by make install and that's all there is for Tor and then you're going to become an unprivileged user again and uh, then we're going to build Provoxy. This one is slightly more complicated. First, you have to run auto header. Then auto conf. What those two programs do is simply uh, put together a configure script for you. So then you're going to run configure, same way you did before. Then you're going to run make. And when you're done with make, there's a couple of gymnastics you have to do. So you're going to uh, su to your whoopsies, you're going to su to your root account, and now you're going to have to edit your slash etc slash password file. You can use any um, text editor to edit this. And on the bottom line here, you're going to add a line that looks like this. It's going to be provoxy followed by a colon, followed by an X, followed by a colon. Then you're going to have to choose a user ID. This can be any number that's not taken by something else. I just chose 7777. Followed by a colon, followed by a, a group ID. You can use any group ID that isn't taken. I chose the same number, 7777. Then you're going to need two colons here. And then slash dev slash null, followed by a colon, followed by slash bin slash false. And you're going to save this file. Then you're going to edit your slash etc slash group file and on the bottom you're going to need a provoxy group so just type in provoxy colon x colon and the same group ID that you mentioned in the uh, password file in my case again 7777 followed by a colon and save that now you're going to have to make a couple changes to the uh, configuration file for provoxy uh, as soon as you're done running make install of course so after you've um, created the, the group ID and the user ID you're just gonna run make install like that now we're going to edit the configuration file so it's vi slash user slash um, slash local slash etc slash provoxy slash config alright there we go now we need to add and change a few lines in this. The first thing we're going to need is right at the top of this file, 
uh, we're going to add the following line forward hyphen socks 4a space slash space 127 dot zero dot zero dot one colon nine zero five zero and then a space and a dot do not forget the space and the dot now we're going to just search through this file for the line that contains log file space log file here it is we want to make sure this is commented out because we don't want to uh, log the uh, sites that we're using when we're browsing anonymously now we're going to look for the line that says jar file space jar file we're going to comment this out as well simply put a pound sign at the beginning of the line now we're going to look for the line that is that uh, begins with uh, debug one and here we want to make sure this line is commented out these following lines the debug uh, 4096 and the debug 8192 these both can be uncommented if you want and finally we're going to go to uh, we're going to search for enable um, hyphen remote hyphen toggle. We're just going to uh, look for uh, the line here. If it's set to one, set it to zero. And we're going to look for uh, enable remote HTTP toggle. Here it is. And uh, if this is set to anything except zero, Set it to zero, and the next one down here should be enable edit actions. Just scroll that down for this. We want to set this to zero as well. So now that uh, Provoxy is configured properly, we can run it. Uh, it has to be started as root, although we're going to actually um, be running it as the Provoxy user we created before. So we're going to type in Provoxy, and we're going to use the hyphen hyphen no daemon switch because we want to see what's happening. Now for user we're going to choose provoxy dot provoxy and now we have to put in the configuration file which is slash user slash local slash etc slash provoxy slash config and now we're all set with that. Now we open up a new terminal and as an unprivileged user we can simply run Tor and as soon as you have enough directory information to build a circuit uh, then you can go over to your web browser I'm using Firefox here and you're just going to go to edit preferences and you're going to go to the advanced tab and the networking tab and then we're going to go to connection settings now for our proxy settings, we're going to do manual proxy configuration. Make sure that you have the following uh, things entered in here. For HTTP proxy, you're going to need localhost. And for the port, it needs to be 8118. Same thing for SSL proxy. It needs to have localhost in this box and port 8118. Now for your SOX proxy, you're going to have localhost as the host here, but the port is going to be 9050. Uh, that's, uh, that's so it uh, connects to Provoxy. So once you're all set with that, then uh, you can just hit OK. And now to check that you are in fact browsing on the Tor network, simply go to the website T-O-R-C-H-E-K, that's xenobyte.eu. And this website should tell you if you are con if you are successfully connected to the Tor network. If we scroll down here, it will give you the IP address that you have assumed. And it tells you what country this IP address is. In my case, here I'm. Well, it looks like the Netherlands. And if this says that your IP is identified to be a Tor exit, then you are successfully uh, browsing the internet anonymously.